18. It was just getting light. The sun wasn't up when we got on the bus early, early on the early bus for Hogboro. We had the Omega meter and the mind control course in a brown paper bag. We had left had the leftover money we had not spent the last time we were in Hogboro, and a few additional dollars scaped, f- scraped from various secret savings. We had about twenty dollars between us. It was quiet and sort of deserted around the bus terminal. A few people were sleeping on the waiting room benches, and an old guy was mopping the floor. The rush hour wouldn't get started for almost an hour. Most of the stores were closed. There were sheets of newspaper covering the sample drawings in the windows of the tattoo shop. We walked towards the Bermuda Triangle Chili Parlor. It was cold. The sidewalk was a funny gray color in the early morning light, and it bounced cold up at us. A few pigeons, looking ruffled and sleepy, walked around walked around on the pavement, trying to work up the decision to fly. The wind whipped our ankles and up our trouser legs whenever we came to an intersection. Winter had arrived. The windows of the Bermuda Triangle Chili Parlor were all steamy. We could smell coffee and hear cups and plates banging together. Through the steam, we could see three, four, five yellow light bulbs. We went in. The inside of the place smelled incredibly good. Fresh baked corn muffins had just come out of the oven. I know what they smell like because my mother gets these heat em yourself frozen corn muffins that you make in the toaster. Even those smell all right, but this smell could only be the real thing. Besides, there they besides there they were in a steaming pyramid on a big platter on the counter. We sat down on two stools right in front of the corn muffins. Two corn muffins and two hot chocolates, am I right? said the guy behind the counter. The hot chocolate was a great idea, and different from any I had ever had before. I think it was made with milk instead of water. It was thick and foamy, and there was a marshmallow melting in the cup. Ah, the two scholars, a familiar voice said. It was Samuel Clogarsh. Two heavy, two corn muffins, heavy on the butter, and a hot chocolate with double marshmallows and whipped ice cream, he told the guy behind the counter. No eggs today, Mr. Clogarsh, the counterman said. Not really hungry, said Samuel Clugarsh. I had a late supper. We're going to, we were going to come and see you after breakfast, Alan Mendelssohn said. See me now, Samuel Clugarsh said. Bring your cups over to this this table. Have a refill of the hot chocolate on on me. Samuel Clugarsh gestured us towards one of the little black marble tabletop tables in the in the, in the place. He was wearing a red and white striped jacket with pink sh- with a pink shirt and bright green bow tie. He had plaid trousers and loafers made of bright orange-colored leather. You boys are working on an interstellar telepathic communications, are you not? Samuel Kogarsh asked. Uh, We bought a mind control course and an omega meter, Alan Mendelssohn said. Ah, mind control, of course, Samuel Kogarsh said. I don't know if I, what I was thinking of. Uh, well, you can't expect results overnight. These powers don't come easily to humans. But I'll give you my solemn word. The machine will play jingle bells if you keep on working on it. Oh, it plays jingle bells, I said. It plays jingle bells the same day we got it from you. What? Samuel Klugarsh looked very surprised. I mean, uh, of course it did. Samuel Klugarsh's mind control is scientifically designed course. It works. It always works. Maybe you'd like to write me a little letter saying how you're satisfied with your Omega meter. Well, that's what we came to see you about, I said. We, we really aren't satisfied. The Omega meter works all right. It plays jingle bells, and we followed the instructions... And we can go to into a state of 26 or whatever, whenever we want to. But when we get when we give mental com- commands, the only thing we can get people to do is take off their hat and rub their bellies. And once we got a guy to do a little dance. I don't believe it. I don't believe you, Samuel Kogar said. No, really, and Alan Mendelssohn said. That's all we can do, get people to do. We read the book and we've been practicing on people, on dogs. But that's all we can get anyone to do. That's all? Samuel Kogarsh was pretty excited. Show me, show me right now. We looked around for somebody who wasn't up to much mentally. There was a guy sitting at the counter wearing one of those red hunting caps. He was pulling a little, little pieces off a hard roll and popping them into his mouth. Then he'd spend a long time chewing each piece, all the time gazing at the coffee machine, as though he were looking right through it and a hundred miles away. Watch that guy, we said. We both went into a state of 26, and in a few seconds, the guy was taking off his hat and rubbing his belly. Come with me, Samuel Kogar said. I've got machines in the bookstore that I want to test you, want to use to test you guys. 
Put their stuff on my tab, he shouted to the countermen, and he hustled us out of the Bermuda Triangle chili parlor.